Good day to one and all present here virtually today. It's my extreme pleasure to welcome you all for the final day session for faculty development program on field hockey organized by IQSE and Department of Physical Education of Sri Shankarlal Sundarbai Sheshwin Jain College for Women, Srinagar, Chennai, in collaboration with Hockey Unit of Tamil Nadu. I'm happy to share that we have been conducting the event successfully all these days celebrating World Olympic Day starting from 23rd June to today. I cordially welcome the resource persons and participants. Now I please to welcome our informative and innovative resource persons, Mr. Mohamed Munir, FIH International Hockey Empire, and Mr. P.K. Anil Kumar, Physical Director, Agarwal Vidyalaya and Junior College and National Level Empire. Now Mr. Anil Kumar is going to handle the session from the point of uh, umpire's view, interpretation of the rules during match situation and incident. Next, uh, Mr. Mohamed Munir is going to handle the session from the point of technical view, uh, the interpretation of rules during match situation and incident. Over to Mr. Anil Kumar. Good evening once again. Warm welcome to all the participants for the seventh day of faculty development program. Uh, first uh, three days, uh, most uh, Mohammed minutes are taken the class, and uh, next three section was handled by me. The first day I was talking about the umpire pre tournament, that before the tournament, how he has to prepare, and uh, before the match. Then I came to the top. First day, sorry, I am sorry. First day, it was uh, just briefing the rules and regulations of the hockey. Then I, I came to the before the tournament, how the umpires has to prepare from the uh, home place to the venue. Then I came to the topic during the match, what are the umpires has to do? Yesterday I was discussing about that. Today, what are the situation that umpires are facing? I'll uh, first give the clips. And from that, I'll explain and one or two questions. I'll ask and I'll, I'll self give the answer. First thing, I want to tell you that area, the umpire's area, where Okay, the area of umpiring to keep in mind. This is very, very important for an umpire when you are doing the match. It is green area. Usually we'll say that is a green area is between 23 to your co-umpire 23. That area you can relax a little bit. Not You cannot relax, but you can relax a little bit. And if any mistakes or you miss any ball, it will not create much problem for you. So that is the that is why we call that area as a green area. Next is yellow area. Yellow area is a between the shooting circle and 23 meter of yours. That area you have to be very careful because from there the move will create and becomes a goal. So that area your concentration should be very clear because penalty corner will be awarded there and the aggressive tackle will be there. And the play, the fast, the game will be fast in that sense because the attack, they want to enter the shooting circle. So you have to be very careful in the yellow area, red area, which is called shooting circle. That area is the main because that area vision will change the match itself. If you missed one ball, if it is a goal, that's all. That that vision will be a very costly vision. So that that area, you have to be very conscious. You should focus fully, no disturbance, nothing. Fully focus on the game. And the decisions you are going, going to give in that area will be very, very valuable. So that area is very, very careful. I'll uh, show the play field and explain you about these areas. Now, this is what, from your 
through here, this line. This is what I told you, green area. Here, any mistakes or if you miss the ball, it is not going to cost you anything. But it is not that this area you can do mistake, but little bit, little bit. It is not that much serious area. Now, this 23 to shooting circle. This area, if you miss a ball, it will be a very costly because from if you miss a ball, it may be penalty corner. Otherwise, if you miss the ball, that ball gone inside the shooting circle, it may be a goal. If attacker had a foot and if he carries the ball inside the shooting circle, if attacker had a foot, you miss the ball, it gone inside and the another attacker score goal. So that area, the yellow area between shooting circle and 23 meter line, it is called yellow area. There you have to be careful. This red area in your half, you have to be very, very careful because this, this is the area the additions will make a match very, very important. Now, about the aerial ball, aerial ball, that playing up aerial ball. Playing aerial ball, you can play the ball above your shoulder by lifting your stick above but it should not be dangerous to the opponent player and in the goal you can play it at the same moment the rebound from your sh your should not cause any danger it is not that you are not allowed to play the ball above your shoulder you can play the ball but once you play the ball when you are receiving the ball above your head the opponent player is close to you. It will. It is a foul against you. The same way, once you receive the ball above your shoulder, if the rebound from your stick goes to the opponent player body or opponent player part, it is a dangerous. So you can play, but it should not be dangerous. So when you are receiving a ball, aerial ball, receive it. You should control the ball to the ground. I'll show the video how clearly. The players playing an aerial ball. Just watch this video. You will get an idea what is I mentioned before in the slide. Let's see that last defender how he clears the ball. <laughs> just watch the black player. Just watch is lifting the ball. See the defender. He clears the ball. I'll play it again once again. Just watch. The, again, I, once again, I'll play the video just to get, to get idea. From here, the attack is coming. The yellow player is receiving a ball and scoops to the goal. Oh, it was cleared by black player over it. Just watch again. In the slow motion, you will get a clear idea. Just watch. It's clearing the ball. It is not disturbing anyone. The same incident if the last defender tap the ball, it goes to the back line. If it goes front, the attacker body or whatever it is, it will be a penalty corner. In the midfield, I'll show the another video. You can see the aerial ball above the shoulder, how they are playing. See you, see you. Just watch. A red team player scoops the ball. It was cleanly taken by the black team player. Because that uh, another player of the red team is away from the ball. Again, you can watch it again. Just watch the red team player scoops the ball. The black team player plays the ball. See this. The red team player is not coming to disturb. One second, you watch. See the red team player. Once the Black team player receive the ball. He is not coming friend and disturb. If he come friends, that will be foul against the red team. Even the player is close to him, it will be a foul against the red team. Another video I'll show you that that aerial ball. Guess what? This is what is this? This is foul because. Watch the orange player is very close to the red team player. Okay. Let's watch the red team player. The orange player is very close. 
is not even 5 meter away from the ball. So it is a foul against the red team. Just see. Okay, if you if you scoop the ball, if you lift the ball when the player, the opponent player is close to you, it is a foul against you. If the opponent player is within the reach of taking the ball, if you scoop the ball, that is a foul. But if he five meters away from the ball, you are scooping the ball in the hand, it is allowed. Okay. Now I'll have some questions. That means on field incident. And this question is asked by some of the people. Can umpire change his decision? How? Whether umpire after giving a penalty corner or a goal. But he have a doubt. Can he change his decision? What is the steps to change his decision? Yes, the umpire can change his decision. He has to take time off and call his co-umpire and concern him if it is wrong he can change or in the international hockey the video referral is there you can go for video referral the teams will come and approach you they will ask sir please ask the video referral they will have a referral they will ask but in the normal matches once you give a decision you know that, that there is something wrong in your decision you can concern at the same way if your co-umpire co-umpire was clear in that ball you are given a penalty or not. When you look at him, he will come to you, towards you and tell, there is something, I can help you. When the team's approaches, nowadays, this question was asked yesterday. Whenever the decision is given, the players are running towards the umpire, asking the co-umpire, asked to concern a co-umpire. So, when this thing, there were players coming to asking you, before that, you can see the co-umpire and you can ask him, and you can change your decision. So, umpire can change his decision with the, you have to consult your co-umpire or in the international match, you have to give, go for a video reference. Can we give a penalty stroke for the foul happen outside the shooting circle and when? You can give, I already told, an intentional breach by a defender inside the shooting circle, penalty stroke you can give. Again, I repeat, intentional breach by a defender inside the shooting circle you can give a penalty stroke but only incident you will award a penalty stroke for intentional breach by a defender outside the shooting circle only in the shootout competition you should not give a normal game only in the shootout competition it is allowed an intentional foul by a defender outside the shooting circle you can give a stroke in shootout competition not normal competition after 15 minutes of first quarter the side need to change this is what the some of the people will ask yes in the golden rule after first half you have to change to the side but in the four quarter match once the 15 minutes is over you no need to change but you have you can go back to your bench side you should be inside the ground. You should not come out of the ground. You can bring water or you have to plan strategy. All these things you can do. Even the people who are sitting in the bench, the substitute, coach, manager, warrant, they can come inside for the two minutes. After two minutes, once there are two minutes, you can see the clock. The umpire will not wait for you to come. Once the two minutes is over, the umpire will start the game. So that first quarter, between first quarter and second quarter, you no need to change the side after second quarter is over this both the team will change the side and third and fourth quarter you have to play in the same <coughs> half now i will show you the questions happening in the penalty shootout competition okay first is where will be the operating umpire and non-operating umpire stand in the shootout competition? The umpires in the shootout competition, where they have to stand. This is very 
uh, mostly if you gone if you saw the videos of shootout competition you can find out where the umpires are standing first for your knowledge i am telling you the operating umpire will stand in the top of the shooting circle without disturbing the proceeding that means you should not stand in the middle of the uh, shoot uh, shooting circle the shootout taker has to run with the ball you have to watch the eye on the shootout taker and you have to watch the goalkeeper also once you blow the whistle when the shootout taker is moving towards your direction you should move away from the shootout taker that is what without disturbing the proceeding and non operating umpire will stand in the side of the goal post inside the shooting circle simple way means the pushing where the penalty corner push is taken there the non operating umpire has to stand and both the umpires should not disturb the shootout takers and also a goalkeeper see this is very important you should not disturb the shooting shootout taker the proceeding that proceeding the ball should not the, you are standing in the middle of the shootout taker or you are standing in the middle of the goal it should not happen so you should not disturb the proceeding according to that you have to stand and always the you have to keep eye on the goalkeeper also the shootout taker and the non operating umpire has to just watch the game during shootout the goalkeeper commits foul and non operating umpire what will be your decision yes this is very very much uh, this will happen during shootout competition and non operating umpire is no where the part to give a uh, decision because he is a non operating umpire the, all the decision will be taken by the operating umpire you are a non operating umpire you should not blow the whistle or give decision simple you should keep quiet and watch what is happening around there if your operating umpire ask you for a help you can help him how will you give your help or give him a correct decision should discuss pretty much yes this is what if you are a non operating umpire the operating umpire needs help how will you show you have to have some understanding between them if the goalkeeper foul i'll show this action or attack a foul i'll show this action all these things you should discuss during pre match discussion so that why this is i'm telling you particularly if it is you discuss all these things in pre match discussion you will not take time and call the co umpire and talk i to i if you discuss in the pre match discussion in the i to i itself you can give the decision don't need to stop all the both of them they're having a discussion and making everyone know what they are talking all these things will not happen just look at as your co operating umpire non operating umpire if you are a operating umpire if you have a doubt if a goalkeeper commits foul you just look at him he will show yes it's a foul he shoot out you will show some signal you should keep that understanding or he will show the stroke signal if it is intentional or for example if attacker commits a foul he will show this way that showing the hand to that side this is and all you should discuss in the pre match discussion if a goalkeeper did stick check intentionally what will be your decision once it is intentional means in the shoot out intentional breach by or foul by a defender is penalty stroke again i am repeating the penalty stroke during this penalty stroke any player who are listed in the match report can come and take the penalty stroke but you should not receive any red card or the same thing a defending player that the, it is not that the goalkeeper was standing for shoot out has to take the penalty stroke the player the substitute goalkeeper who was standing outside that means he is in the list 18 he can come for the penalty stroke after the penalty stroke he has to go back and the same way the person who was taking a penalty stroke he can he should go the shoot out competition will continue with the five shoot out taker and one defending player both the teams what are the color cards should be used in the shoot out competition yes this is very important you should not give green card in the shoot out competition we have to use only yellow card or red card for foul no need to you should not use a green card because there is no need in giving warning if you give yellow card that player should be get out of the shoot out competition 
he, he cannot be replaced by another player clear okay next is if a jersey number 10 received a yellow card in the last minute of the match please tell me whether he is allowed to take part in the shoot up definitely is allowed the yellow card duration is over in the duration of the play shoot out competition is separate competition so don't carry over the card and don't make it is purely not duty of yours it is a duty of a technical people but what happened the tension the pressure what will you do you are the umpire you are given for the jersey number 10 yellow card the last minute of the match but when he comes to take a shoot out you will tell yeah i given yellow card the last minute till 10 minutes card how will you come inside so for that confusion you should not, for that only i am asking this but it is the uh, duty of a technical people now now i will show the videos the correct position the correct position to view the ball penalty corner or run of play or a penalty stroke so that you can clearly view the ball you are you should not go to the crowd but you have to come out little bit and view the ball so i'll show the three videos where if you stand it will be clear for you to view the ball just watch the video you will get a clear idea first one is penalty corner i'll show you see see the umpire hello here the ball is played here see this he was here he, he knows what is happening here yes watch again watch again the hello see here see the view she was very clear see again you no need to consult the co umpire or anyone you are in a clear view so okay so you this is the clear view where you can view the ball clearly next one penalty show see the umpire how clearly she watched see the umpire how clearly she stands just watch the umpire watch the umpire she was running along with the ball see this is the position she stands again again watch see it was intentional intentional by defender breaking down see that block block she is not allowing the player to attack her to take the ball okay in this video you can see that defender intentionally blocking the attacker she is not allowing the attacker to take the ball now another video i'll show you see the umpire position how clearly she side the ball again watch see that see the umpire here she just moving away from the crowd and clearly she have a view she have a clear view of the incident okay the last video is just watch you know kindly watch this moment slowly the player the attacking player is trying to try to score the goal by the time the goalkeeper is taking a dive his left hand glove fall on the pitch 
The second incident was the goalkeeper right hand glove and stick intentionally going towards the direction of the ball. Just tell me what will be your decision. Again, again, watch the view. Kindly watch this moment slowly. The player, the attacking player, is trying to try to score the goal. By the time the goalkeeper is taking a dive, his left hand glove fall on the pitch. The second incident was the goalkeeper right hand glove and stick intentionally going towards the direction of the ball. Just tell me what will be your decision. Kindly watch this moment slowly. Okay, in this incident, what will be your decision? Definitely it is a stroke because intentionally the goalkeeper is throwing his glove, right hand glove and stick to block the play. First incident, he was, he, it was accident. He was The goalkeeper was trying to dive by the time the left hand glove came out. But the second incident, the goalkeeper intentionally releasing his right hand glove and throwing at the ball so that the attacker cannot play the ball. So my decision will be 100% stroke. Okay, these are the incidents I mentioned you during this section and I think I may clear a little bit of your doubts. Now yesterday one person asked what is the career for an umpire? Yeah, it is a very good uh, question. As an umpire, I also should tell you what are the steps, what are the procedure to go for umpiring if you are taking umpiring as a professional. So first thing, all these things you should have the fitness, compulsory you have to have a fitness and go through the rule books thoroughly and you should register in your district association. Your district association, they will conduct ex exam and you have to register in your district association. Another thing is you are registered in your district association, they will recommend you for the state body, state association. And from the state association, you will be go through the national. They will recommend you for the national. When you do the, this is a cycle I'm saying. What is the thing, how they will promote you, I'll say you later. From the nationals, they will recommend you for international. But now it is, uh, they are bringing an online exam for the umpires and online registration for the new umpires. Hockey India wants a new umpires for the coming years. So they give, they, they are going to register all of you in that. But all these things will be done by the state body. You have to register and you have to send your details to the state body. The state body will send your details to Hockey India. But the condition is you should do umpiring in the state championship for minimum two years. And you should be below 25 years. For an umpire, you should be below 25 years and you have to do umpiring for two years. That state championship and state level tournament, all these things you have to do. Then only your state body will uh, recommend you for the National Hockey India. And how you will go to the 1-1 one -one level, step 1, district level. If you are doing good in the district level, there will be an exam. They, uh, they will conduct the exam, then only they will give you chance in the district level. During the classes that you are doing excellently, then definitely your district association will recommend your name for the state association. And you have to do some state championship and state level tournament. Then the state association will recommend you for nationals. Once you go for the national hockey India tournament, you have to do well and main thing fitness. In all the All India Tournament Nationals, they will conduct yo-yo test and 45 meter run. You have to clear the fitness test. If you didn't clear the fitness test, you, uh, you will get only 50% of DA. Within the time, you should, if you are not clear, they will give you time for clearing after the tournament. You have to come back and you have to clear and send the report to the Hockey India. Otherwise, you will not get further posting. Then you are doing well, you are doing fitness well and you are doing umpiring well. Hockey India will recommend you for international. This is the procedure. Okay, so main thing, fitness. Fitness you have to do 
and are they same at same moment you have to be very good in your rules and regulations all these things so all this three days and including this day i may cover little bit topic about umpiring first thing first day why, why i didn't take the prior to the tournament main thing the rules the umpire should know the rules thoroughly read the rule regularly or not only reading the rule you have to discuss with your senior umpire what is this this is what mentioned in the rule this is the incident happened in the ground what i have to do interpretation with the senior umpires and you sh- you will have a experience in the ground you will have a experience you may face some incident you can say this is the incident happened sir i given this decision but the teams are not happy or this decision is wrong or this decision is correct you have to discuss with your senior umpire and read the rules regularly the next i think pre tournament preparation before going from your home to town to the venue what are the things you have to do that is the main thing you have to prepare yourself for everything everything that what the things you have to carry how you have to set your mind everything and i told one point in that before the pre tournament you have to discuss with your coach or a uh, what do you say coach or a trainer who has gone the, to the that tournament because you will get a clear idea how the standard of the tournament how the teams are playing everything you will get a clear idea so better talk with them so you will get a idea then the next is before the match before the match what i said you should uh, discuss pre match discussion is very 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 important pre match discussion is good the matches you are going to do will be excellent you have to discuss all the point not really leaving this one penalty corner okay i done already not like that you have to discuss all the point inch by inch with your co umpire before the pre match and you have to fix a time peaceful time that means not hurry hurry in the last minute of the match 5 minutes discussing inside discussing and going inside it will not help you so be prepared pre match discussion before the match you have to discuss well then or the color you are wearing everything in the last minute once you go to the ground then you you have a doubt uh, this team is wearing this color i don't i didn't brought this color why the clash all these things should be settled down before itself once you enter the field simple thing check the flag post ask the goalkeeper is ready check the players are ready count the players as a technical officer whether he is ready or what then you have to start the match at time don't go run and round and then change the t-shirt don't borrow the watch don't borrow the whistle all these things you have to do before the match during the match as i said run around from your back line to opponent co umpire 23 meter and be proactive when you are going to the co umpire 23 meter you should be conscious there is there will be some attacker in, inside your half you have to run back and be confident i said be confident confidently you have to give vision and be close to the ball this point always remember in your mind if you are close to the ball even if you do a wrong decision the players may accept but if you are away from the ball and even you give a correct decision definitely the players will not going to agree with you and you when your co umpire needed help that time you have to give him help don't show action or don't give decision if your co umpire is not looking at you go to the 23 meter look at him eye to eye contact eye to eye contact if you are having a very good eye to eye contact definitely the match is in your hand there is no need of taking time out calling your co umpire and having a discussion meeting all these things should not be there just look at your co umpire you will be in his position just discuss all these things where we have to do not during the match before the match and confident vision vision should be confident and be close to the ball in as i said that the area between 23 to 23 little bit relax but inside the 23 to shooting circle be conscious inside the shooting circle 110% concentration because there is the decision going to change the face of the match if a team scores this is a penalty stroke you are not inside the shooting circle you are just standing outside the shooting circle but you miss the penalty stroke the team loses by one goal definitely the team will come against you they will ask why you if you are given the penalty stroke first itself you may equalize 
that is what the shooting circle is a very 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 important area that is what i tell red area there you have to be very conscious and once you give a decision be confident and control the match i said once the match is in the control of the umpire it is a pleasant for the audience to watch i repeat the point again if the match is controlled well by umpire it will be a pleasant for the audience to watch if the match is not controlled by the umpire the match will become a mess how you can control you have to set everything in the starting of the match you are standard yeah this man is tough he is going to the rules he is very strict he is going everything according to the rule and the same way you, have, you should be approachable the player has to come and ask you should be polite yeah it's a penalty corner i am sure in that once you close and confident the player will not run to you and ask all these things you should do in the match after the match as i said warm down and you should not have the criticizing each other you missed that ball i was coming there you didn't watch that was a penalty stroke why you didn't give all the thing you should not be criticized because he is also umpire you are also umpire it, 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 it may be a bad day for him or it may be a bad day for you or some mistake mistakes will happen mistakes you can't do umpiring without any mistake but don't criticize each other get the feedback from your reserve umpire or co umpire and listen to them and the same way if he ask you give your feedback after the match discuss with your co umpire's manager and uh, technical people they will help you they are the people who are watching the game throughout so you can gain and discuss with the well wisher who is there to help you and keep all these things always increase your plus and reduce your minus and the same thing what you are not done in that match what your new things you are going to do in the next match all these things you have to practice then relax okay i think most i covered the uh, not fully i cannot say fully i covered 50% out of what what is umpiring now I, now i'll handle the give the section to mr mohammed munir he will handle the incident happening in the situations in the field what the as a technical official what you have to do please i'll now hand over to munir over to munir mr mohammed munir sir mission uh, you have uh, given about uh, uh the empowering the empowering issues the interpretation and uh, how it has to be dealt as per the situation uh, i have been following up with your sessions uh, very closely it was really informative at the same time uh, it was uh, updated uh, a little bit to add on uh, what uh, uh, what i can share with uh, all the participants uh, is a uh, i hope you all enjoyed the program uh, of development of uh, the technical uh, issues of uh, field hockey all right so i need to little bit uh, touch on uh, what uh, the topic was today about the situations and the interpretations okay now uh, the empiring area was very clearly defined by anil uh, very happy that uh, he understood and made you understand what the uh, areas were the green the yellow and the red areas okay as rightly said yes of course in the green area you may be a little bit slack because you were not in position or uh, maybe your your mobility was not there or uh, you you did not uh, keep in mind uh, or uh, keep in mind the pro the proactive aspect and then uh, uh, you did not anticipate the move okay in the green area maybe you can little bit uh, be away from the ball and uh, still give a decision okay yeah in the yellow area as he is rightly said anil rightly said yeah you need to be very confident when you give especially when you are not in a good position uh, but that also can be accepted but uh, be more careful when you avoid penalty corners from in the yellow area uh, and you are outside the 23 meters uh, which will uh, it's clear indication that uh, uh, either you are not fit or you are not uh, following the ball uh, or uh, anticipating the move so you have to be a little more careful in the yellow area uh, and this and this is the area where uh, it could lead to, to an award of a penalty corner uh, and sometimes it could lead to an award of a, 
penalty, uh, team penalty uh, with a card or a free hit with a card, uh, especially when there is a very bad tackle inside the 23 meters. Okay. So then the red area is a very, very critical area where, uh, let's say it is a major uh, area where it causes conflict between the empires and the players. In the other two areas, still you can manage the situation. You can even consult, you can even console the player and say, sorry, I was out of position or maybe, yes, I saw that. I think it was, but uh, uh, maybe I was wrong. I could help you up next time. No problem. But in the red area, there is no excuse in the sense it's going to be a very hard decision. It could be a penalty stroke for a deliberate infringement or a non-intentional breach uh, where a probable goal would have been scored. So a probable goal is a very, a very sensitive uh, thing to happen or if you have awarded a goal. So if, you, if there was a probable chance of scoring a goal, that means the team has been deprived of a penalty stroke or maybe a, 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 an advantage was not given where a goal would have been scored or a goal had been disallowed. Okay, so it's a very, very important uh, uh, part of the field where an empire has to be uh yeah right like uh, rightly said in the right position to give right decision so the videos you saw the videos you saw you you might have seen the empires although some of the empires were uh, chasing chasing in the sense they were fit enough to run and be at the right time right uh, for example at the baseline to give a penalty stroke uh, the two of two incidents where we saw that the empire was very close to the ball to give a penalty stroke okay so these three areas are very important for an empire to give his judgment. As uh, previously, what Anil was telling also, that you need to be at the right place to give a right decision. And if you are not in the right place to give a right decision, maybe the team will take it for once. Maybe they take it for the second time also. But the third time, definitely, uh, the player may, players may come and ask, uh, how did you manage to give a decision when you were very far away from the ball? Yeah, that's but natural uh, to ask a question like that. So, as an empire, rightly said by Anil, you have to be in the right place at the right time to give a correct decision. Okay, so that was one thing with that. Uh, I just need to comment a little bit on the aerial ball. Okay, so as far as uh, the conflict between the empires and players uh, is concerned, is on three aspects. First is tackling, whether there was a body tackle or the stick tackle. Second thing, on the aerial ball, and third, on dangerous play. Okay, so this dangerous play can be anything. It could be a sliding tackle, it could be a very hard tackle on the body, and uh, it could uh, also be something which is not in the rules. Like when the ball is playing in the far end, and there is a clash of players somewhere else in the other corner of the field of play. Okay. So, mostly we have to check the intention. Okay. Very clearly, you have to be very careful in this. And now coming to the aerial ball, there are three factors governing the penalizing of aerial ball. As rightly shown in one of the videos where you saw the yellow player was not 5 meters and the ball or the, or the orange player was not 5 meters and the ball was cooked. So, the first uh, incident where you need to penalize is make or be sure that the opponent is five meters if the opponent is not five meters and the ball is cooked then you have to blow initially there the second is check to see where the ball was scooped was it scooped into a crowded place which is prohibited so the guy who scooped the ball is at fault the third is the receiver whoever is the receiver for example, if the ball bounces off the pitch and if there is a receiver or a receiver is coming, for example, if uh, the B team player is scooping and then you find the A team player is coming to receive the ball after the bounce, he becomes the initial receiver. So, yeah, the other player cannot come into that. So, rightly, it was shown in the video also. Uh, you have to be very sure and be very proactive when you penalize. So, normally, you have to make yourself... Uh, understand about this rule very clearly still there is a lot of uh, uh, what do you say uh, uh, less clarity not uh, not fully less clarity with regards to this overhead balls uh, 
being played. Okay, so that so the, this, these three areas are very important for an empire. Okay, then uh, as uh, I think they discussed a little uh, very very deeply very good uh, uh, deeply into the shootout competition where uh, uh, you have to how you manage as empires there and rightly said uh, yeah the non-operating empire the non-operating empire has no business to interfere with the with the operating empire decision but when asked he can and he should always be ready to help him and the only occasion i think in my opinion uh, is uh, to help the operating empire by saying whether the ball crossed the goal line or not and that's the only place i think uh, the non-operating empire can help and for this the non-operating empire has to be on the baseline uh, at the back line uh, maybe for five meters from the nearer goal post but be clear when to help the co when you help your operating empire and do not force yourself for any for giving a decision without being asked otherwise uh, it's going to land into controversy that uh, uh, the operating empire has not given a goal and this uh, non operating empire has signaled for a goal okay so that's very important uh, you need to be very careful on that yeah, yeah he did uh, check on that uh, he did mention about the intentional uh, playing of the stick and where, where it is a penalty corner and uh, yeah the cards the cards issued the cards issued was uh, right you cannot issue a green because uh, it's just a warning and doesn't make sense in issuing a green card to a player in a shootout competition so it should be in yellow or red okay and then uh, yeah uh, positioning for award of a pc was very well defined uh, by him and uh, the videos were very clear so try to be try to be at the right place uh, uh, when you award a pc never give a pc on a running moment so which will uh, actually hamper your uh, your decision and uh, it can and it could be questionable yes yes for giving a big uh, big uh, penalty uh, like a penalty stroke it is also very essential that you be again at the right spot uh, and uh, to be close to the incident uh, to tell the players yes to tell them that i was there i could see the uh, i could see the incident and i know it's a penalty stroke i'm sorry uh, it's a number of players so and so player did stick check and all that okay so uh, as far as this uh, uh, infringements were concerned these are the major these are the major incidents uh, where the, an empire has to take a decision and i tell you gentlemen it is just uh, it's all uh, in, in the know what you see what your eyes see what it goes to the brain in a fraction of a second and then what it gives back to you so which means you need to be in a very good position to see the incident so that that message goes to the brain and the brain tells you yes this is a pc and this is a p this is a ps or no no it's the other way around so something like that so you have to be very close being far away being far away from the incident is not going to help you in giving good uh, judgments all the time okay so that is one thing so again i said uh, requesting on this uh, technical uh, on the two days first two days when we had this technical decision uh, it is not so interesting like the guys uh, on the field of play uh, it, it could be mountainous uh, sometimes uh, when the match is not very interesting, then uh, the technical people will definitely feel a little bit bored. But of course, the employees will be enjoying on the field. But as a technical man, you may, we must be always uh, ready to help the teams to play. Okay, especially the technical officer uh, uh, should uh, encourage uh, uh, that uh, team managers uh, or the coaches of their teams to help their players to play by, but within the rules. And then again, the tournament regulations should be kept in mind so that they don't misbehave with the empires. And also, and also make sure that uh, uh, the safeguard the empires. Okay. Uh, I I understood uh, that from uh, the organizers that most of you are physical directors uh, uh, in this uh, program. Yes, it starts with you guys with the entire game of hockey to play or not to play 
starts with you maybe at the school level or the college level at the institution level maybe at whichever level yes your physical directors you play a very important role in uh, helping the players to play for this and making the players also to understand what are the rules uh, the coaches come later on once the players uh, uh, take up the game in a very professional manner okay the coaches are there to fine tune the players but as physical directors you can induce you can induce the players to say yes play the game of hockey our national game of hockey it's a fantastic and interesting game so it is up to you guys uh, to how best to induce the players in uh, starting to play the game especially at the school level uh, because we we do need have do need to have the, sorry bridge the gap uh, uh, between the uh, junior players and the senior players uh, at any at any level maybe at the school level or college level or uh, at the district level or the uh, state level so this is very important for uh, uh, for the players because they need to be guided properly for which uh, i i hope uh, this session uh, this program had been useful for your for the physical directors uh, to tell their players okay this is where the rules uh, which were told uh, and this is how it has to be played and this is how it, uh, their bias will be on the field of play they will be helping you to play and what whatever it is on on all aspects okay and yes what why do why what is the benefit or what will be the prospects of being a technical officer uh, normally when we, uh, we say financially they might be not much of a thing but if you love the game you and you want to be involved in the game yes the next thing after a player not all players can become international but uh, many of have uh, have seen them become national empires and then uh, have become international and they've been all around the world uh, officiating okay so after finishing your empiring career i think uh, then if you still want to be associated with the game and you love the game you want to be involved with the game yes you can come into the uh, field of uh, technical uh, the initial uh, indu induction will be during the as a judge and uh, from the judge you develop yourself uh, to become a technical officer and then from a technical officer if you are a very competent technical officer and you have an experience of technical officer then you become a tournament director and uh, once you're a tournament director in your state unit or in your uh, national then uh, they recommend you to an international to become a technical officer and after technical official in the international level you become to uh, you be ready to go to the world level tournaments maybe to the asian games to the champions trophy or maybe the world league or maybe again and uh, if your performance is good maybe you'll be there in the Olympics. it's not not only a pride for you it's a pride for the nation and also a pride for uh, uh, your own uh, state and then your district and your your village and your hometown it's a legacy actually to uh, when you uh, when people see you progress uh, in the in the in the field uh, where you love to be there okay so uh how do we say that uh, like uh gentlemen i think it's all in your hands uh, after this uh, session after this program maybe you can go back and think over and uh, induce the players to play or you uh, just uh, uh, if if not the players we're looking for as uh, anit rightly said we're looking for empires uh, below 25 and uh, Hockey India is really encouraging uh, uh, officials who are young and uh, who are talented. Yeah, of course, then you need to uh, fulfill the required uh, criteria or parameters of uh, passing the online test. And uh, yeah, the Hockey India has developed a lot of uh, programs. In fact, we have been doing online also. Uh, and they are also conducting courses uh, now uh, online because of this uh, c19 so uh, we and any queries uh, from your guys uh, we are you're all uh, welcome to ask us and we are ready to help you at any time uh, and looking forward uh, to see some of you in the near future uh, and god bless thank you madam
मैडम हेलो डॉक्टर ओके व्हाट इज रेडन बाय मैडम ओके अनिल डू यू वांट टू आंसर दैट नो प्रॉब्लम आई कैन नॉट सर नो प्रॉब्लम ऑल राइट what do you what is meant by red and yellow zone red and yellow zone is nothing but an area which is on the field which has been divided it is not actually on black and white it is a divided or an agreed area where you can be more focused for example in the yellow zone you need to be very careful but at the red zone you need to be very very careful it is it is only a division of area where you have to be more more careful in giving your decisions it is it, it is not uh, made as shown in the video the goalkeeper intentionally throw a stick on the glove will that to be a warning or also a stroke yeah i think anil you can do that yeah it is 100% uh, stroke even you can show a card to the goalkeeper because he is yeah. intentionally blocking the attacker first yeah. incident the left hand glove falls it's it's on the dive which fall but the right hand glove is throwing towards the ball to block the attacker to try yeah. who's trying to score the goal yes so as the rule says a player cannot throw his stick throw his stick intentionally so here the goalkeeper was shown throwing his stick intentionally uh, along with the gloves and subsequently he saved the goal so it is a very clear case of a penalty stroke with a card and yellow card uh aerial ball already i explained it's simple as it is that uh, if a team player scoops the ball and when the ball comes at two players are standing together it will be a foul against the a team player if one player is receiving a ball you have to give a privilege for that player to receive the ball if when the player is receiving a ball if any player approach to that ball it will be the foul against the person who was approaching the ball I'm clear. You can uh, ask Munirana. We will explain more. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll just add to it. Uh, just he he wants it to, to be more clear. Well, it was good. Uh, very well explained actually by uh, Anil uh, with all his videos, especially his videos were very clear to explain uh, what is the uh, the, uh, the parameters required uh, when playing uh, aerial ball. Okay. So the aerial ball, I told you as I already mentioned to you, the initial uh, scoop where the player lifts the ball. there he should be very clear if an opponent is five within 5 meters then it is a it is a uh, uh, offense there so it has to be blown there second is where it is landing an aerial ball should not land in a crowded place okay so when it lands in a crowded place it is very difficult to judge who is the receiver okay the third is if the aerial ball is being scored uh, if the aerial ball is uh, action is being done the receiver must be given the full opportunity to receive and control prior to that no opponent shall come within five playing distance of the receiver this is very clear but for this you have to be very proactive the empire should be should read the aerial ball yeah what is a new categorization of hockey india official uh, doctor what do you mean by new categorization i think he is asking about the grade grade system oh, oh the grading yes uh, the, 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 the uh, now hockey hockey india has formulated a, a grading system for for empires uh, it is uh, it will be uh, intimated to all the uh, member units and uh, the officials uh, with regards to the different grades so there will be three different uh, grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 uh, and they will be elevated as per their performances Oh, is asking about age yeah, age limit age limit maximum is asking yeah 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 it is asking okay uh, <laughs> this uh, this is a very critical question in fact there is no question of maximum age uh, for a uh, for a technical and a, for a technical official and a td as far as they are active but for an empire of course internationally it is 47 and in the national level uh, Uh, they stick on to that 47 because beyond that uh, he will not be able to perform uh, or give full justice for his uh, 
to 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 do as an empire. Do you want TD also? Yeah. The player scoops the ball, and during that time, if an opponent player is front of him, so that time which card the player will show? I don't think uh, you have to give a card. It is a foul against the scooper. That's all. Yeah, just a simple foul, and uh, it will be against the person who scooped the ball. Yeah, this uh, yeah we, uh, we have been having this request uh, many times, but uh, it has to be in a proper manner. In the sense, uh, if you want to do an empiring post organized by Hockey India, which is normally done in FIH level tournaments, uh, empiring course, uh, it ha you have to be nominated uh, by your federation. It has to come through the Continental Federation and then to the FIH, and from the FIH to the uh, to Hockey India, uh, so that uh, you can. Uh, attend the empiring course but it's a process where which uh, uh, if you follow up with the hockey india website uh, whenever they we are conducting the world level events uh, and you can uh, always request your national federation to uh, help you to participate in that uh, courses you uh, during not tackling if a player is with the stick what will be a prediction or tackling if it is a stick check, 100% foul against him and a card. Yes, right. Sir, so my doubt is when any ball is lifted by a team player, the ball is received by a team player. What should be? Team B, team B player. Oh, team B player. Ah, team B. Oh, A player is lifting, team B player is receiving. Yeah, he yeah. can receive the ball. There is nothing wrong, but if any other player is close to that ball, if it is was the ball was scored by a B team player, if the A team player and B team player are standing or there is a crowd, it will be against the B team player. Yeah, it's that. Uh, let see. Okay. Ball intentionally played by a different player. Yes. If a ball played, yeah, PC. It is a PC. Oh. oh, thanks, doctor, for that. Uh, yeah, of course, the journey was a very long journey for me, the, uh, doctor. To tell you very frankly, I played uh, nearly 17 years for my port, and then uh, meanwhile, in between, I was started my empiring. And after empiring, I really loved the game. I didn't want to stay away from the game, uh, so I uh, took up to technical, and from from there, I've been uh, uh, yeah, I've been involved uh, quite a lot. Uh, so now I'm. Uh, one of the technical officials of the FIH World Panel and the Pro League. Yeah, it was really good uh, because uh, it uh, mostly it kept me busy and also it helped me in uh, uh, in my personal uh, life uh, as a uh, tournament. I'm very proud, uh, very proud uh, to have represented the country in the various international tournaments. And we are also looking forward for uh, the, uh, the, uh, our, our people. Uh, in the international arena uh, to boost up our uh, 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 the Indian image there because uh, mostly you know how difficult it is to be there but uh, even once you are there you will really enjoy it. During the match, any match that you can you can tell that. During uh, the match is stopped due to the rain. The match, the remaining time will be played on the next day. What is the situation of the match? The goal and the card, everything. Where the match is stopped, from there the game will be start on the next day. I just need I'll add up a little bit on this. Uh, if a match uh, has been uh, stopped, has been stopped uh, due to, as uh, rightly said, uh, due to bad light and due to heavy rain and the water. And the pitch is not in a playing condition, so this match uh, we will be postponed to another day. Uh, not necessarily on the same pitch; it could be on a different type of pitch or a different uh, uh, type of uh, 
ground also it could be even if suppose if it was played on the artificial pitch and then if there no other pitch is available it can be played on the grass or the gravel ground but but as rightly as anil said uh, the score the score will remain the same and the match will restart from the time it was stopped Ah uh, yes, uh, the, we already had hockey. India did uh, conduct the two online tests, uh, and we are we are just waiting uh, to see if uh, we, are, we are, they are likely to conduct uh, maybe another online exam. But uh, it it will take time. It will take time. Uh, so I think uh, hockey India will be. You can just check the website of hockey India to keep yourself updated uh, about the online exam. Yeah, yeah, it's your call, Anil. Yes, it is uh, intentional and unintentional. Un you have to judge because we cannot say this will happen, that will happen. You have to judge. It is why the players are asking you. It is the set that you have to set this the starting of the match, and the goalkeeper delays. It is it is not allowed nowadays. The goalkeeper has to take time out and pad and all. It is his duty to tie up the pad, everything, and enter the field. There is no time out should be taken for the goalkeeper padding and all. So first thing, if he did, just call the captain and inform him. This, if it is happen next time, definitely the goalkeeper will be carded. So when you pass this message, next time the goalkeeper will not do this. So intentional, unintentional, you have to judge. Rightly said, as rightly said, Anil. uh you you have to see the intention of the goalkeeper whether he is deliberately doing it or not if he is deliberately doing it then call the captain and along with the captain tell the goalkeeper that this is not allowed the next time he does he will be sent out all day well done what type of opportunity mr gopal krishnan are you looking for uh opportunity as an empire or the technical what are, what what are, what opportunity are you looking for Next. During match, if a colleague or player is you with some vision, blind, or you have you referred him, so what we can do in this situation? Definitely, good question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, uh, Durga. Uh, you want to do it, Anil? Yeah, you you carry on, man. Carry on. Okay. All right. Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Durga. That a co co. co Colleague empire not able to help you. Why? Why the colleague empire was not able to help you in the blind area? Is where you have to uh, know. Maybe because your your pre-match discussion was not good enough, or uh, maybe the other empire was not fit enough to be there uh, in the right place to help you in the blind area. Okay. So at this situation, I think if the ball is in your half and or in your zone, and uh, you have given a judgment and it's. Uh, and you know that uh, the other empire or the co empire is not able to help you in the blind area i think it's better you stick to your decision and always tell the players that uh, sorry uh, this is what i saw and i think uh, i can but they still will pressurize you and uh, tell you ask the other empire but when you see the other empire is not helping you you can always tell the players sorry the other empire is not able to help me so my decision stands so you need to stick to your decision and especially when you don't get the uh, help from the colleague empire the last second of the match umpire awarded a pc and the same time winter blows for full time that the pc be completed yes it is the pc has to complete then only the match is over that is called prolong the penalty corner all the things i explained you regarding prolong penalty corner when it's over Yeah, complete the PC after completion of the PC only the game will be over. Player beating the ball close. Some league tournaments, some matches are conducted in club. Some in class, especially the way he plays. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I yeah I agree. As per the rule, is it fair? No, it 
it is not that the question of fair or unfair because normally what happens is when so once a tournament is conducted we make sure that it is conducted on uh, uh, it, uh, all the matches are conducted on the same pitch as uh, it started from day one but due to circumstances or due to reasons uh, suppose uh, there was a water problem on the turf pitch and uh, the pump system has failed and it's not going to work anymore uh, then they may have to shift the grass field okay that is exceptionally exceptional case and uh, giving an advantage uh, for the home team to play on turf is not uh, true in fact and uh, no, like it doesn't happen always but uh, giving a home team an advantage of playing the second match of the day is there there, there is a provision uh, so that the home team can play the second match of the day uh, but I, the, this is not uh, done it is not fair enough uh, to give the home team uh, uh, to play all the matches on turf it has to be evenly distributed if you have two pitches uh, like the turf and the grass which is normally is not permitted next during the ball inside the shooting circle getting home chance is under person under when time is out as a do should i visit that time or it's your question anna okay thanks sir all right uh, this is a good a very technical question uh one sabri yeah if the time is over it's it is best to blow the whistle immediately okay whether getting a chance to score a goal it, it may be 100 percent but if the time is over the whistle has to be blown for completion of the each quarter or half time or a full time so you cannot wait to Uh, see the ball uh, being received by the player and then scoring a goal and then giving and then blowing the whistle it is only that match has to be played as per the time if it is 15 minutes it has to be played 15 minutes only it, you cannot extend the time for or wait for a goal to be scored the player is beating the ball goes to the goal post but unfortunately opposite player pushing the goalkeeper but the ball was enter the goal if a uh, attacker push the goalkeeper definitely it is a foul against the attacker the goal will not be awarded you cannot push the goalkeeper or any player during the play so it is a foul against that uh, attacker 16 yards it to the defending team and the taking fees to attacker may take the stroke kicking at the on 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 the spot on the spot on the spot yeah it must be taken from the on, from the spot that's what i think she means yeah during pc goalkeeper made a rough tackle with that tackle he may award a card he will want or continue to play rough tackle is intentional 100% stroke and a card nowadays in football For fair judgment, we use video review or off key, or we have any provision like that. Yes. If sir, you are question. Yeah, we have. Uh, we do have a video referral uh, in hockey nowadays, uh, especially in uh, the top tier uh, tournaments, uh, FIH level tournaments, uh, where uh, it's always better to refer the video empire to give a right judgment, uh, even if uh, there was uh, uh, there was a wrong call. Okay. the only thing is that the teams get uh, one one chance uh, to uh, to call to call for a video referral and if they they win their video referral they will they keep it otherwise uh, if they if they are wrong then they lose the referral yes we do have video referral in hockey nowadays but at the top level of course it is a very it's a, again uh, it's a it's a money which is involved there the number of cameras and then we need to have an additional video empire there. can duration of the match be reduced with the concern of the protocol normally it's not uh, permitted you cannot reduce the duration of the match at least officially you cannot do it you, because uh, nothing in the regulation says that the match uh, 35 minutes match can be played in uh, say, yes but it has uh, happened it, there, there are many a times in the local level it has been done please explain the bully rules bully rule is if a, during the run of play if a player got injured you have to stop the game because 
the safety of the player we have to stop the, uh, stop the game the time out will be taken once the injury is attend we'll start with the bully bully is uh, two team players has to stand close to the ball when umpire blows the whistle they have to tap the stick one time then they have to take the ball yeah for uh, it it is like this so it is for a simultaneous breach of the rules uh, uh, and then there's, a, there's an accident caused by a clash of players and some unforeseen incident like uh, suddenly if you find if in an open playground uh, if you find uh, 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 so those who are not involved with the game suppose we say a dog running into the field of play or maybe the spectator who runs into the field of play then the match is stopped and how do you start the match you start the match with a bully Yourself being a self-critical during the game, and it is also affecting your future business. How do you stop? Uh, how do you stop yourself being self-critical? Yeah, without uh, you have to be a self-critical. You have to be self-critical in the sense, uh, otherwise you'll be you you land up in being more confident, overconfident. Sorry, will be overconfident. And definitely, it will be affecting the future decisions. In the sense, if you don't uh, analyze yourself uh, on uh, uh, the decisions you take, maybe right or wrong, whatever it is, you have to be a self-critical. Self-critical is very important to the game of, as an empire, which also affects the game. And of course, it will definitely be affecting your future decisions. Also, if you still keep it in mind that uh, you have done something wrong in a previous tournament and uh, you should take it away from your mind uh, uh, when you go in for a fresh uh, for a fresh game or a fresh tournament why indian company is producing a politics so oh okay all right this is a very uh, it's a equipment uh, question uh, ds uh, you know, because it's a, it's a, it's a craze. You know, uh, most of the sticks uh, they go from India, or uh, from or from Pakistan. They are made in Pakistan or India, and it's only the stickers which are put there. Uh, if you go to Punjab, you will see a lot of uh, Indian companies uh, producing fantastic hockey sticks, and when they export them, and it is all labeled there. But of course, nowadays all uh, even the other countries, because previously the wood was. Uh, the, uh, the Indian wood was very good. Now it is all uh, fiberglass sticks. Uh, so most of the foreign countries also have uh, started making uh, very good uh, hockey sticks. Uh, they, it depends on the preference of the player. It's not that uh, which stick we like. Yeah, your call, your call. If your player rude to the umpire, definitely the way he misbehave or he abuse to the umpire, definitely I'll show a red card. Definitely I'll show a red card. Because the players has to play within the limit and discipline. Rude behavior to the player or umpire, definitely a red card. Sir, for umpiring, what is the age in the order of the qualification up to the level? You should go. Yeah, now the Hockey India have said the umpire should be below 25 years. As I said, you have to go and register in your district association and state association. Below 25 years only, Hockey India wants umpires. Yes. Sir, please tell us if both the captains will play in the time, fight that time. What should we as umpire? Okay. So there is a fight between both the teams. You should not go in between. So just stand and watch the players who are running from far to create a problem and both say better call the captains and tell them and send them out no no his question is if both the captains while uh, while playing team fight if both the captains both, are fighting both us should go out that's all <laughs> Playing captain will not get any privilege to fight at all <laughs> captain is responsible to control the fight you should not fight Oh, umpire is favoring any team by by decision can because uh, ah. no, if this is uh, will not happen, 
this is not happen this will not happen we cannot say the co ampere is favoring any team and all it is and all uh, not there nowadays not at all is traveling towards the goal but the the official goal that the ball had inside the goal for the finish once the whistle or hooter comes the ball is dead the ball is he, is is deemed as dead so there is no question of a goal being scored uh, after the hooter or the whistle is blown Players score the goal. Lose to another player. If he lost the stick during the incident, on get your question. On get your question. What the decision given to the offense players score the goal? Lose to another player if he lost the stick. Sorry. What decision given to the offense player? The offense player if a playing a goalkeeper gets hard, who will be play as a goalkeeper? If a player got a card, you have to bring a substitute goalkeeper inside. If you don't have a substitute goalkeeper, one player inside, you will not get any privilege for a goalkeeper. Uh, players are allowed to tackle with a face mask on. Yeah, the player yeah, are permitted player to, play, to play to play to play with the face mark in continuation of the PC, of the PC but not after completion not after of the completion PC. Of the if he does so, does then, so he will be, then, then he will be then he will be carded. PC rule will not be applied when the ball travels five meter from the circle. So, so it means the ball has to cover the ground. Ah, your question is not too clear, but. Uh, what I understand from this is the PC rule so will, will 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 not be applied or will cease to apply once the ball travels five meters outside the circle. That is five meters from the dotted from the circle is the dotted line. If the ball comes out of the dotted line, that means the PC is completed or PC rule does not apply. And uh, it can it could be right or left. There's no issue about it. Right or left. Yeah, your, your call, your call. Yeah, prolonged by the last minute, the dying minute of the match, if a penalty corner is awarded, while taking a penalty corner, that Uta blows, it will become a prolonged penalty corner. The power. After completion of the penalty corner, only game gets over. When the penal, prolonged penalty corner gets over, when once the goal is scored, if a defender unintentional foul, committed by a defender, attacker commits any foul, the ball travels 5 meter, that means daughter line, the penalty gunner gets over, penalty stroke is given, the penalty gunner gets over, for long penalty gunner over. I think it is 455, madam? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing a clear explanation and in-depth details of our technical committee and uh, umpiring in hockey. Uh, it was uh, very informative and lively session, sir. Uh, thank you for your patience in answering the question asked by the participants also. Once again, thank you so much, uh, both of you, sir. Uh, as we have completed the session on faculty development uh, program on field hockey, now we will move to valid report of the session. Um, I invite the most eminent personality, uh, Mrs. Renuka Lakshmi, a General Secretary of Hockey Unit of Tamil Nadu, to share a few words on this occasion. Ma'am, please.
a very cheerful evening today for me as general secretary of hockey of tamil nadu a very content person so first of all let me thank the sri shankaralal sundarbai sanson joint college for women and in particular dr malayalag for conducting such a wonderful program and to make it more worth and the future we have the pride of hockey today in the technical line that's mr mughal mohammed munir he's been working with a portrust this the moment i would like to introduce him <laughs> he has been with us for a very long time especially a person from portrust he is an fih international hockey umpire fih world panel and pro league technical officer though he has been introduced many a times i am feeling proud to again introduce him to all of you we have with us mr anil kumar a physical director of agarwal vidyalaya and college at webri and a national empire with us today i would like to join with all of you to remember the past technical officials who have brought tamil nadu lot of identity and that is one mr mohammed gaus mr vengata chelam we have with us mr panduri nadan still we have mr dorasami we can't forget mr nabib all from chennai mr calvin de cruz of madurai mr dorasami is from trichy today after them we have munir hanil anakumar surya prakash navinid krishnan and so many others who have gone into the mainstream of hockey india so i'm sure all of you will be with me these 7 days you have traveled with munir and with anil i'm sure we are going to have many more technical officials not only in tamil nadu but in the national and international arena this has been a very allied program with a lot of motivation and inspiration very informative as i have been watching a few of their programs really it has been very wonderful and i'm very happy that they have given a very clear picture about what you would like to be in the coming future in the field of hockey yesterday i had seen a program online and it says the decline of hockey i don't feel ashamed to share this with you the decline of hockey means as an association we are doing our best balancing between the players on the field and the technical officials trying to develop the game of hockey hockey is more than 80 years in tamil nadu we had been witnessing a lot of olympians also so we are striving hard as you all have been witnessing we won the senior men nationals last year i'm sure we are going to do better the years to come with a few more indian players into the in national camp we have women and men in the national camp and in the technical side i'm sure we are going to make more followers Sorry for the interruption, ma'am. Please unmute. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Where did I leave? Can you? Can you tell me? Because it's a uh, very uh, it's a good opportunity for me. Where did I leave off? Anyway, let me continue. on behalf of my president mr say j manogar who is very busy and was supposed to be with all of you and the members of hockey unit of tamil nadu the technical chairman dr sendil rajkumar and his team will definitely be very content with this program that has been held for the past 7 days 
So let's plan and reach our goals. We need to adopt the challenge. I will speak to my technical committee and my president and members and see if we could have an umpire and a technical uh, clinic in a month's time online if the lockdown is to, be, to proceed for the months ago. As they say, again, till July, there's going to be a lockdown end of July. So it may continue till August. I'm not very sure. But if it is, I'm sure we could have an online uh, exam for umpiring and technical officials, but I will not promise now. As uh, Munir and uh, Anil had already told you, the criteria for being an umpire or a technical official, yes. In Hockey India is concentrating on the youth below 25 to get into the main, mainstream of hockey. I mean, technical official as an umpire or whatever it is. For that, you need fitness, language is very important, and computer training. And I've been asking them to have their classes in the regional language. Even if Hockey India is unable to, definitely, if there is a demand, we'll have it in the regional language to the convenience of all those who are very interested. The questions and answers were really overwhelming. I wish I could have gone back to 20, 42 years back so that I could also become an umpire. Anyway, the masters have been uh, given a lot of opportunity, about 35 to participate in the master games at the world level and at the national level. So I'm sure at that level also we'll be having technical officials from Tamil Nadu in particular. Each day there was a different subject, different uh, uh, interaction, and I'm very sure you all, those who are gathered here on this online session, must have been very content. You can continue with the permission of Munir and Anil and our technical committee. You are permitted. I'm sure you can keep in touch with us. Any, feel free. You can always call on us. It says like the like the eagle, the vision like the eagle. Let's continue with a vision like an eagle. Right? Let's soar high. Let's take the advantage of the storm. The storm might be hockey unit of Tamil Nadu and the technical committee. We'll definitely, you can make use of us and make you all your dreams come true. Once again, let me wish you all on behalf of hockey unit of Tamil Nadu and Sri Shankarlal Sundarbai Shanshun Jain College and not forgetting Munir Mohammed Munir and Anil Kumar, a very big thank you. Thank you. One second. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your sensational and inspirational uh, speech. And um, now uh, we'll move to vote of thanks. Uh, gratitude is, is the most eloquent form of courtesy. I take this opportunity to render the vote, the thanks, and register my gratitude to each and everyone for making the event a grand success. The college follows the mantra, go beyond, and diligently works towards attaining excellence in each endeavor. This is possible because of, because of the support given by the management. I express my sincere thanks to our secretary, sir, associate secretary, sir, principal, madam, and vice principal who encourage and guide us to achieve our task. I extend my heartfelt thanks to the hockey unit of Tamil Nadu for collaborating with us in conducting the event. My gratitude goes to the first persons who have spent their valuable time and shared their knowledge with us all these seven days. Thank you very much, both of you, sir. I would like to show my gratitude to the IPSC team of the college for their support. I also register my sense of appreciation to the technical team for their tireless support. I thank all others who rendered their support in various ways. I wholeheartedly thank all the participants who have joined and exhibited their active and enthusiastic participation from day one to final day. Last but not the least, I humbly thank the Almighty for guiding us to conduct the faculty development program in a smooth manner with a sense of fulfillment. Once again, I thank you all. Have a nice day, stay safe, and stay healthy. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Good job, Dad. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Muni, sir. Okay.